In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Dear students, may peace and blessings be upon you all. What we have done in our previous classes is we have seen the latch, the basic SR latch. Then we added the clock to it, make it flip-flop. And we saw the SR flip-flop. Then we saw that we don't want this one one stage which was unreliable and we say okay we will complement the input to make a d flip flop then we say no okay d flip flop is used in the registers in the storage we have seen it that is working wonderfully well but it's one one stage is unused unreliable and we wanted to use that and we discovered that we got a jk flip flop which we discussed in the last pre-class video, okay, where we saw the JK flip-flop uh, actually putting to use the 1-1 stage, but not actually uh, up to that point which we like it to because it was like toggling and what we did was like this, that if, if this is my NAND gate and this is another NAND gate, and this is its feedback loop we already know it and this is my clock circuitry again the NAND gates this is the clock and this time around we don't say it S and R we call them as a J and K because we got an additional feedback loop from here to here and from here to here okay this additional feedback loop actually helped me to get this one one stage to put to some use but really we are not actually up to that uh, mark where we can use that uh, effectively but still something is happening that's the toggling that's what we discussed in the last video that if this is one and one stage say for example it was set that means q was zero and q complement uh, q was one and q complement was zero that means the set state if it was set state and you put up the 1-1 one, one stage, what will 1-1 one, one stage do is now in JK flip-flop, it will not be unreliable, it will be a toggle state. That means it will invert the previous state. So if the previous state was set, it will make it reset. How? Because this one will come from here into this NAND gate and this NAND gate will have clock one, K one, because it's 1-1 one, one stage. So K is one, clock is one, and this one comes up here to make all the three one. So the output of this NAND gate will be zero and this zero comes up, this zero because it was the, initially it was the set state, okay. That means the zero comes up from here and goes whatever the other two are, we don't care because one of the inputs is zero, the output of this NAND gate is going to be one. And for this inside latch, we know this is our old latch, our old friend, we know if the one is on the top, it means reset. Reset means it will make 1 as 0 and this 0 as 1. So it is toggling. If again this comes back because what happens is the clock we have is called as an edge triggered clock. That means this is my clock which is coming up here. I should make it here. So this is working on this. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's not called edge triggered. It's called a level triggered uh, clock because uh, the, the way the clock is designed is to work on this level and it, it takes some time it takes it has some delay and in the meantime this clock comes in these inputs come back to it these outputs sorry come back to the inputs because there's a feedback loop so that means the zero will come from here back to it now this will this NAND gate will become one and this one will go back to this NAND gate and output will be zero of this. Now zero and one to this latch. And we know when this is zero, one, one on the bottom of the latch, it will, it will set. That means it will make it one and it will make it zero. That means from it was set, it became reset. Now it's become again set. And this thing happens continuously till our level of that clock is high. Because I am saying my gate will work on the clock. And say for example, this is the level of that clock okay and it is working on this level okay till this level is high this circuit is active that means if it got outputs these outputs can come back and change the output again 
then these outputs can come back and change the outputs again till the clock is high. Okay, so that means we are not getting toggling one toggle in a one clock pulse, rather we are getting continuous toggles till this clock pulse is high. So if it is toggling like this, it is again toggling, again toggling, again toggling till the clock becomes zero. And this is called as a level trigger. This is called as the level triggered <coughs> clock. Okay. So this is quite simple because if, say for example, uh, I am putting up a current, I am pressing the button, till I press the button, the current goes and this circuit will work. Okay, for example. Now, till I press the button, it takes some, say, two seconds. Till I press the button and lift my hand, say it takes two seconds. So, th for that two seconds, this is active. So, that means because these inputs go to the output and there is a feedback loop that outputs come back. And when they come back, they change the output, they toggle it. Now, this toggling is not happening once in a clock cycle, but many times. That is our problem. We don't want to do that. We want this toggling to happen only once in a one clock pulse. So that we can put it to use, say counting in a counters. Right? But how to do that? So there are two ways to control this continuous toggling. The one is that we have a master slave flip-flop. And the next is we have an edge triggered clock. So we can solve it using two methods. Either we have a master slave flip-flop or we have the edge triggered flip-flop. So what does that mean? So what is a master slave flip-flop firstly? Let's try to draw the master slave flip-flop. In a master slave flip-flop, we have the same flip-flop, but we have twice this thing. So how it works, let us see. This is my NAND gate and NAND gate. And this is my feedback loop. This is the another NAND gate for the clock circuitry. And I have same this JK flip-flop, okay, here. Let me erase this for a while to show it clearly. So we have here, this. it will have a clock and it will have these inputs. These inputs, it will take from this JK flip-flop, the master one, okay and it has that feedback loop again the same it is same copy of it here and then clock circuitry okay and this is the clock which it gets and this is your j and this is your k but to this <coughs> this clock goes in a negative form to this circuitry to this slave this is the master flip-flop, this is a slave flip-flop. What is happening here? Let us see, let's try to understand. Because these are two different flip-flops, right? This is the one. I will try to make it using the dashed lines. And this is the other. So this is master and this is my slave. And that this feedback loop which was coming to the inputs now comes from the slave to the master, not from here to here, because it is coming from here to here, like from here to clock circuitry of this, here to here, but now in this scenario, it will not come from the master, sorry, slave output to this, the, because th these are the final outputs. This is the Q and Q complement. It will not come from here to here, or it come from here to the master uh, circuitry. That means, they are coming back here. Let me use a different pin. It comes from here into this. And from here, it comes into this. Now, how this scenario will help us? Why are we doing it? We are doing it so that we will do the toggling once in a clock pulse. One clock pulse, one toggling. So how is it possible? Let us try to see it. Say for example, it was set. In the beginning, say it was set. For example, and I'm putting in a 1-1 one, one state. I'm only showing 1-1 one, one state because rest, it works same. Okay? 
Now let's put the one one state here. Now this one will come from here in the feedback loop and the clock is one. Now firstly when the clock is one what is going on to the slave flip-flop? To the slave flop clock is going in a negative form. Okay that means if it is one not negative complemented form. If it is one the complement one is zero so the zero will go to this that means this flip-flop is slave flip-flop is inactive right now okay because it does not have any kinds of you know this thing it, it's not working right now it's not working at all because the clock is zero now this one will go here and this one will go here and depending on what the, what the feedback loop was so this is say zero the zero comes in into this so output of this will be one this sorry this was one so one will comes come uh, this is one coming out from this green line and clock is one and k is one and output will be zero for this NAND gate now from the here the, uh, the zero goes from this green line to this NAND gate the clock circuitry j is one clock is one but this green is zero so what will be output of it it would be one and to this latch when it is one on the top and a zero on the bottom it's going to reset that means the output of this NAND gate will be reset that is zero here and one here but it is it, it will not work it will not work till this clock level is there the clock level is there that means clock is high to this whole period these outputs will not be reached to this flip-flop that means the final outputs will not be generated so that means when this clock finishes and hits zero it hits zero when it hits zero actually that means this master will no more take the inputs because it's 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 inactive now because clock is zero so it is inactive okay and this zero will go from this complement that means makes one and now the clock of the slave flip-flop is one that means this is now active then when this is active is it can take the inputs now it is taking the inputs here zero and one now this NAND gate will make it 0 ko 1 banayega and 1 ko ye 0 banayega so 1 is on a top okay when 1 is on a top what will happen to it will it set or reset it will reset because 1 is on a top the latch ko jab 1 milenge upar se aapko pata hi hai wo wo reset hoga reset ka matlab hai ye 0 hoga aur ye 1 hoga thik hai na yani ki toggle ho gaya ab lekin feedback loop to hai na ye wapas aa sakte hain so they can they can come back while the clock is zero while the clock is zero this flip-flop is active so they can come back even though they come back but this flip-flop is inactive it cannot work because its clock is zero so even though they are coming back but they are making no effect so in nutshell in a one clock pulse it will toggle only once now it has become reset now when the second clock pulse comes in okay when the second clock pulse comes in this becomes now the one and now this becomes zero so zero clock to this slave flip-flop will make it inactive and this will be active now when this will be active these 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 uh, uh, these outputs can come back to it and change the scenario now how this is zero the zero comes here when this is zero so output will be one and this one will come from this green line to this so output will be zero and zero one means set state for this latch that means one will be on a top zero will be on a bottom but they will be of no use because this they can't go forward because ye wala jo flip flop hai ye abhi disable hai because isko clock zero mil raha hai theek hai na to jab ye sara iska level jab khatam hoga sara jab ye sara finish hoga ye clock theek hai na at that moment when it hits zero now when it, this clock hits zero now this clock will hit one okay and this is active now that means this part of the flip-flop master flip-flop will be disabled and slave flop flip-flop is active that means it can take the inputs okay it can take these inputs now the actually these are the outputs of the master flip-flop that is one zero so it will make one 
inverted to the 0, 0 inverted to the 1 and 1 is on the bottom means this latch will set. We know that already and if you're not understanding it, that means you have missed the previous lectures or videos. So in that scenario, I can't help you, right? Simple as it is. But if you watch the previous video, you are understanding the concept, then this is crystal clear for you. So this is 0 and 1. Now this 1 is on a bottom. That means will it set or reset? Tell me, will it set or reset? Very good. This will set. So set means 1 on a top and 0 on a bottom. That means again it's toggling. So it's toggling, but it will happen only once in a clock pulse. So in a one clock pulse, this happened only once because it was the output was the, because in, in this scenario, the input goes to the output, but still clock is high. Okay. And they're coming back and changing. But he, here they are trying to come back. But at that time, this, this master is at clock zero. So because this master works on when clock is one, at that time slave is inactive. These outputs cannot come back. Okay, and even slave cannot take these inputs. Okay, and when the master is inactive, that means this clock is zero, the slave will be active and it can take these inputs and change the scenario. And what it does, it, it does nothing, it toggles. And one on state, we know JK flip flop, it toggles. Okay, it to if it is set, it becomes reset. If it is reset, it becomes set. We know that already. But the thing is that now this master slave flip flop makes it toggle once in a clock pulse, not continuously. In here, if it is the clock, it was toggling all the time while it was high because outputs wapas aake, inputs mein jaake change kar rahe the, hai na? So, agar ye mera clock pulse hai yahan pe, pehla wala, ye toggle ho gaya, phir se wapas aake, ye toggle, agar set tha, ab reset banega, ab reset tha, ab set banega, set tha, to reset banega. Jab the clock high hai, jab clock zero hoga, tab kaam nahi karega. Thik hai na? So we don't want that. So we want to control this beast. So how we control the beast? We apply the master slave flip flop. But this scenario I'm seeing, it's working wonderfully well now because it's, it's giving me only one toggle per clock pulse. But it is a problem. What's the problem? Problem is being a computer science student, we want to make smaller devices all the time. We want to make smaller, smaller and smaller devices and more powerful devices and more cheaper. So we try to work on many fronts. We are reducing the size. We want to all the time work to reduce the size. We don't want a bigger size. We want smaller. This, the recording I'm doing in my phone, it's so powerful today. It's a, just a small phone and it's so powerful. Then, a, you know, way back we had a big computers. They were not as fast as this mobile phone. So how we did, did how, how we, you know, accomplish this thing? By minimizing the size. So we want to minimize the size, but well, I'm clearly seeing, I'm increasing this, I'm doubling the size. Jahan pe ek flip flop kaam kar raha tha, mereko do karne pad rahe So I'm, uh, this is, because this is gonna work for just one bit of data. So imagine if I have a gigabits and all those workouts, so how many flip flops I have to use? I have to use double. That's a bad idea because all the time what our motto should be because we want to optimize things. So how we more optimize things? We want the efficiency, how we, how we make our system efficient by making them smaller in size, not bigger. Okay, this is the one motto our you know, computer organization architecture has to make the smaller size devices. And the second point we have is we want to reduce cost. So we want to reduce size, we want to reduce cost. We don't want to maximize the cost. Here we want to reduce cost. The systems which are very costly previously are now very cheap. Okay, so how is it possible? We want to minimize cost. But if I see the JK flip flop and the master slave flip flop, I'm increasing the cost because I'm doubling the gates. So that means the cost will increase. So it's, it's not fitting into my criteria. Okay. And the third thing is we want the speed. We want to increase the speed. The speed we want to increase all the time. We want to faster, faster, faster devices. But here I'm seeing I'm slowing it down. 
because now it has to travel two flip-flops rather than one and I'm making it stop not to work while the clock finishes so I'm definitely decreasing the si uh, speed so what are the motto as a computer scientist you know we are trying to do here we're clearly going against our own protocol so what should we do what we do is what's called as an edge triggered flip-flop what's called as an edge triggered flip-flop so what is edge triggered flip-flop is we have made special clocks which should not work on this level rather on the edge on the rising edge or on the down edge now if my flip-flop say I make this flip-flop as a box now so I'm making it a box I call it as a J and K I call it as a Q and Q complement for example now this is exactly this thing but I'm making it in a box okay now the clock which I give is an edge triggered and I usually show it using a little triangle this is a special clock which we actually you know we're working on the level of the voltage you know, when the voltage remains on that level okay we are working on that voltage level say for example this is 3 volt say I'm working on a 3 volt clock so when it raises from 0 to 3 volt I'm not doing anything but when it stays like 3 volt I make my flip-flop to work but when it comes down from 3 volt 2 volt 1 volt 0 volt I stop and I don't when my when, I, when it reduces to 210 I'm not doing anything okay this is called as a level triggered flop flip-flop but now we can make our circuitry in a manner that this flip-flop works on the positive edge when it's increasing or when it's decreasing and it's very small time because when it increases it's a very small time and it is it is a bit, it, it is as small as the propagation delay of this gate propagation delay means that when the input comes and the output the time taken between the input taken and the output given output produced right so it is it's equivalent to that so if i manage to work on this rising edge of the clock and not on this level okay that means when only this clock rises and my gate will work then after that when it is level my flip-flop is not going to work or even when it goes down my flip-flop is not going to work so that means I'm minimizing all this time and that means I can do this toggling in once in a clock pulse in a one clock pulse it will happen only one time because this rising edge the time taken by this rising edge is very small it is as nearly to this uh, propagation delay of this gate or I could have done other way that if my this clock falls when it falls from 3 volt to 0 volt that is called a negative edge this is called a positive edge so this if my flip-flop works on a positive edge of the clock it's called a positive edge trigger flip-flop like this one and if it is working on a negative edge of the clock it will be called as a negative edge trigger flip-flop that means this will be my flip-flop this is my J and K and this is Q and Q complement and we show it here with a bubble okay we put up a bubble here so the bubble will tell us that it's this clock flip-flop is working on a negative edge of the clock okay and this negative edge again is very small it's, it's around about equal to the propagation delay of gate that means when this clock was on a, this voltage it's not going to work that means these outputs cannot come to the inputs so I don't need the now the master sleeve flip flop this big fella here but we have to read it because master sleeve flip flop actually was the first step towards the toggling uh, of this toggling scenario where one one state into the toggle state later we discovered that we can put up the edge triggered flip-flops that we want to make this flip-flop work, work only on the edges of the clock not on the level of the clock now if this flip-flop works on a positive edge of the clock then it will be called as the positive edge triggered flip-flop if it is working on the negative edge of the clock then it's called as a negative edge triggered flip-flop 
and this negative edge triggered flip flop will have a bubble and the triangle. The triangle here in the let me make it a bigger, if I may. Then let me make it a bigger here. This is my flip flop. Say for example, this is J and this is K. This is Q and Q complement. Here you will have a triangle. It's not visible properly, I guess. Okay, this is my, for example, flip flop. This is J and this is K, this is Q and this is Q complement. And we will have here a triangle. This triangle will tell us that this is my edge triggered flip flop, flip flop, right? Now, if it is JK or it could be D flip flop also. So now we also make, if we want to make D flip flop, now we will not be showing it like the circuitry and all. We'll make it just a box and we assume that you already know it. What is happening on a backdrop, right? You already know that, what is happening on a backdrop. So we know that that, uh, that what is happening here uh, is that the latch and the clock circuit and all those things, you know that. So we will only write here, it is a D, okay, flip-flop and Q and Q complement and the edge triggered flip-flop. And if it's a negative edge triggered, then we put up the bubble also here. We put up the bubble. The bubble will tell us, Bubble is equivalent to saying not gate, okay? Sometimes, you know, you show, you show the triangle and a bubble. Sometimes you show only bubble to tell us this is the not gate. That's also the way we represent it. So now we see, we will use this edge trigger JK flip-flop flip -flop, or even the DFF to make our counters. Okay, and in the counters, we will not be making the circuit huge, but we'll be using these boxes. And we know, we assume that you already know what is going to be the output. And if it's a counter, then we only use the 1-1 one, one state. So 1-1 one, one state will be used using the T flip-flop. Even though it is a JK flip-flop, you know, it's a JK. It's a JKFF. And if it's a edge trigger, then we will make a triangle here. If it's a negative edge trigger, we put up the bubble here, right? We already know it. But if we plug the inputs to the both of them, I'm putting the input, say one, so that will go both of them. So this is a one, one state. So if I have to make it as a toggle flip-flop, where, where in a toggle flip-flop, I want only the toggling. I want only this toggling happen. So if it is set, it will become reset. If it's reset, it becomes set. Okay, so then I have to input both of these J and K with the same one. It is kind of, no, we have a D flip-flop where we uh, use the one to this input and, and complement form to the second input. But here we are giving one to the both. Either it will be zero to the both or one to the both. So when it is a one to the both, it's actually what? It is, it's basically the one, one state. That is the toggle. And if we get the zero to the both, that's the memory, we know that, that's a memory state. But here, if it is one, one state, it's a toggle. So what will toggle do? What will toggle do? Let's try to give it a little thought to it. What will toggle do? If it is, if it, this is my flip-flop and this is another one, say for example, we'll discuss it in detail in the counters, but just giving you a little concept. That what does a toggling does? So, if this is the Q output and this is the Q output of it, I don't come, I don't need Q complement. So if this flip flop toggles first, so this becomes here one. Okay. Now, if in a second clock pulse, in a first clock pulse, this one toggles. Let's just, <clears throat> just give it a thought that this is my flip flop. This is another flip flop. And I want to count. These are toggle flip-flops. I want to count. Okay, we will do it in, in detail in our next lecture, but just think about it. We want to count. So count means, say for example, it is 0, 0 firstly, then it should be 0, 1, then it should be 1, 0, like this, and then it should be 1, 1, if it's a two flip-flops only. So this is, say for example, clock pulse. In a first clock pulse, initially it was 0, 0. Then the clock pulse comes, and it will become zero, 01. 
So I will make this one to toggle and this one should not toggle. So this is my JK, same JK flip flop and edge triggered and all that. Maybe negative edge triggered. And this is the JK flip flop. And it's again the JK flip flop. This is Q. And this one is Q. And I don't need Q complement here. I'm not, I, that's no use to me. And I am saying that this flip flop doesn't toggle and this should toggle. Only this one should toggle in the first clock pulse. So when the first clock pulse comes, it becomes one. So it, is, it stays as zero. When the next clock pulse comes, okay, this should toggle again, so it becomes zero, but this should also toggle. Now this should also toggle in the second clock pulse. In this clock pulse, only this one toggles, but here this one also toggles, this one also toggles. One becomes zero, this zero becomes one. So that means, if I make it this way, because my LSB is on this side and MSB is on this side, so I will make it a little change here. So that my outputs, I will make it to, uh, you know right to left because my LSB is in the binary is on the this side. Okay, so now this is my J and K. Okay, this is my clock, and this is my Q, which is going to the input to this. So this is the J and K. This is edge triggering, and this is the Q going out. Now think about it, it has some outputs, this is the input and I am giving it one input all the time, okay. Now in a first clock pulse, so this has a clock, so clock is coming, the first clock pulse hits, this is going to toggle, initially I need to make them what zeros, so that's why there is also always a reset button. That's called a clear button. If the clear is zero, it's gonna it's gonna hit zero to all. Initially, there will be all zeros. Okay. Now the first clock pulse comes. This is going to toggle, and this doesn't have a clock with it, so this is not gonna work. So we have to think how this is gonna work. Now first clock pulse comes, one one state. It is gonna toggle, so output will be one here, and it will stay zero. But next clock pulse comes, it should also toggle. So that means I do not have to give it here. This thing is to be given to the clock to the other flip-flop. Now if I give this output of this first flip-flop as a clock to the next. So initially it was zero. So when the clock pulse comes, it will toggle. It will toggle to one. But this zero will go to this clock and this will stay disabled. So now this is as one. Okay, now this is as one and this stays as zero. So zero one. The next clock pulse comes, it has to toggle all the time because it is getting one one input. Okay, it will toggle, it will become zero. But this one now is a clock to it, it will be active and it will also toggle. So it becomes one one, one zero. So one zero. Now next clock pulse comes, this is for second, the third clock pulse comes. Okay, when the third clock pulse comes, it will again toggle because one one state is given to it. It is going to toggle. So this zero becomes one, okay, but will this zero do something to it? No, because this zero will go into it and into this clock and this flip-flop stays inactive. So it will stay at a one stage. Now we have one one, so we have reached one one. Now if again the clock pulse comes, if again the clock pulse comes, what will happen? This will again toggle. Now this will become zero, but before it becomes zero, this one goes to its, its clock. The one goes to its clock, it is also active, so it becomes also zero. So it stays as zero, zero. Now it goes to zero, zero. So that means it st started from zero, zero, then zero, one, one, zero, one, one, and it can make it zero, zero. That's called the modulus of this flip-flop. So if we, if we have a two flip-flops, it can go up to the three, and then reset back to zero, zero, and again count. That's what's called as a counter. So we will use this in the counters and we'll read this in detail. I'm just giving you an idea how the counters work, okay? So hope, inshallah ta'ala, you have learned a lot of things here, like why we have the master slave flip flop, because we want toggling once in a clock pulse, and why we don't wanna do this, because this is, 
costlier, this is bigger size, uh, redundant number of gates used, so we can do the better way and slower also. We can use a better way, that's the edge triggering, okay? And then if you have an edge trigger flip-flop, which will work on the positive edge or the negative edge. So depending on, we say positive edge triggered flip-flop or negative edge triggered. And depending on that, so we have these triangles here. This is called edge trigger flip-flop. And we are going to use only the boxes now. The box itself means this thing. And you have to keep that all the time in your brain ticking what is actually happening. And then the counters, how they work, I just gave you the idea. We will do it in detail in the class and maybe some pre in pre-class videos also. But if you do this, now counters and all, they become like a piece of cake. But if you have no idea of what is JK flip-flop, what is D flip-flop, you're not working with me, then you will really find it tough. Otherwise, it's just so simple. Okay then, see you next time in the new concept, new topic, and adding to your knowledge bank all the time. Until then, Masalama.